and welcome to Landscape Photography World, the podcast for everyone passionate about landscape photography. I'm Grant Swinburne and I'll be your host on the show talking to landscape photographers about their motivations, likes and dislikes. This podcast is sponsored by Syncback Pro, the professional photographer's tool to keep your images safe. How safe are your photographs? Or to put it this way, how would you feel if you permanently lost some or even all of them? The fact is, there are very real risks in storing your digital images on a hard drive, even if they're backed up to an external device. There's ransomware, hardware failure, file corruption, virus infection, and even accidental deletion or destruction. Syncback Pro makes this problem go away permanently. Syncback Pro is the professional photographer's tool to back up photographs, images, documents, and data files. Once set up, it keeps your files safe, quietly and reliably in the background. So if problems occur or disaster strikes, you'll have nothing to worry about. Your photographs will be safe. Which is why it's also the backup solution that I use myself for my own photographs. Take advantage of an exclusive 25% discount today by going to www.backup.sg. The software will never expire, meaning your photographs are safe forever. That's www.backup.sg. Give your photographs the protection they deserve. And now, on with the show. Rosie Steggles has been interested in photography practically her whole life. Rosie had a first SLR when she was in high school, but digital photography has allowed her to have more control over how she wants her images to look, and so she can create more of a mood in her shots. She now focuses on her compositional work and creating a story image from scratch. While Rosie loves landscape and travel photography, she's also a very keen explorer of a lot of other genres, for example architecture, surf, etc. But portrait photography scares her the most. We discuss her horror story, how she's developed her multiple exposure style, the hacking of her Instagram and how she got it back, along with a whole lot more. I hope you enjoy the show. Hi Rosie, welcome to Landscape Photography World. How are you going? Hi Grant, great. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure having you. Uh, been a follower of yours for some time and really taken by some of your shots. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and how you got started in photography and in particular landscapes? Well, I've been photographing since I was in school, I suppose, so a million years ago. Um, started off with uh, SLR and printing stuff at school during mm -hmm. art classes and um, just sort of progressed uh, along the way, just doing amateur stuff, really taking photos of the kids at school and things like that. And then um, when I, my husband and I sold our business a few years ago and um, I jumped into photography because then I felt I had time to do it, time for myself, yeah. that I could, uh, you know, learn some new things and explore the whole world of photography. Right. Fantastic. So I guess with landscape photography in particular, why that as opposed to anything else? Or do you do a lot more that I... Well, um, yeah, I started in landscape photography, obviously, because, you know, there's a lot of beautiful stuff out there to shoot. Sure. Um, but since doing that, I've I have gone into different genres. I like architecture. I like long exposure. I like, you know, astro a little bit. Um, and I've started doing a lot of composite work uh, during COVID. Um, yeah. I spent a lot of time learning things on the internet and, uh, yeah, so I've sort of gone down different paths. Yeah. Take, take us back, I guess, uh, to the school days and, and learning the, the, the initial learning of the, the, the craft and everything. How much of that were you sort of taking in at high school or were you just, you know, just casual about it and it just happened and well pretty casual about it um you know it, it, you only had a roll of 24 or 36 yep. you couldn't see the photo that you took until you got it printed mm -hmm. it was so limiting um so i've uh, you know i love digital i just love being able to see what i've taken i love being able to just take as many photos as i feel like um yep. yeah i just i would never go back to <laughs> uh, the old way although my daughter has my old camera and yeah. she loves um she loves it yeah 
I guess, yeah, I mean, I, I come from a, a similar sort of time period in, in terms of photography and that that agonising wait while you mm, very agonizing. Out whether or not your <laughs> shots were any good. <laughs> Half of them weren't, let me tell you. Yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what, I guess, is your process for setting yourself a creative challenge? You know, in terms of the creativity, where did it sort of start to become that creative pursuit as opposed to, you know, more documenting life? And Okay, doc- well, I guess yeah. that's exactly it. I, I sort of thought I've got to do something more for me to get the photo to look the way I want it to look rather than just look like everybody else's. Sure. You know, there's so many photographers out there taking photos and there's amazing photos out there and I just wanted to find a way of using the photography to create something different and something that I really enjoy. And uh, um, I've I've been friends with um, Mike Langford for a very long time and his wife uh, is Jackie Rankin and okay. she does a lot of multiple exposures and I've done quite a few tours with them and know them pretty well. Yeah. And uh, she's always been inspirational to me in that regard. Um, so I've sort of gone down that path a little bit and then from that gone into composite work as well. Mm, okay. Talk to me a bit about the uh, multiple exposure stuff. I know um, not everybody's into that sort of thing, but what uh, was it that relationship uh that sort of really sparked that interest in it or was it just um, something that I think I've always something unique yeah I think I've always liked that sort of quirkiness that it gives an image mm-hmm. um and it is tricky nothing you know it works it's not sort of oh I'm taking a shot and I've got this exposure in this setting you know it is a bit of a hit and miss kind of thing and I really enjoy playing around with that and and just you know, being a bit more creative and a bit different. Sure. How much are you doing in camera versus what you're doing uh, oh, in Photoshop? Yeah, probably 50-50. Yeah. Okay. I, do, I do do a bit in camera, um, but I do like to do it um, on my computer as well because I can, I can get things lined up a bit better because sometimes, yeah. you know, out in the field, um, you know, things don't line up exactly properly. So, yeah, particularly if you're um, going handhelds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I do do a bit of both. Yeah. Do you set yourself goals and uh, projects to, to work on? Oh, not really. Sometimes, you know, if there's a competition I want to enter, I'll, I'll sort of try and do something. But um, more so I look at um, the time of the year, the landscape, the um, lighting, um, you know, just different things and try and capture things when they're happening, sure, you know, sure. if it's a full moon or if it's a brilliant sunrise or something. And then I can use those images in different times. So it's not like I've got to, oh, this is what I'm going to do. It's just sort of a bit more of a flow kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. So are you planning your, your, your shoots or are you more... Uh, I guess, reacting to the landscape as, as you said? Um, a bit of both. Um, I, I look and see what the sky is going to do in the mornings yep. and things like that. Um, actually, this morning I went to uh, Coleroy and I wasn't really, I just didn't know what was going to happen. I got I was there. there yesterday, actually. Oh, well, I should have gone this morning. The <laughs> pool was getting emptied. Oh, wow. And it was a huge uh, swell and yep. high tide was coming in. Oh, it was just brilliant. And then I got this red sky and, uh, yeah, was, I was just like, yay, I scored today. No. <laughs> so well, I, I definitely got the red sky, but the pool wasn't being emptied. It, it, it was yeah. over full. I actually went for a swim in it uh, oh, right. uh, after my shoot and uh, it was it was a little bit hairy, actually. There was one yeah. I, I actually got uh, almost washed over the wall. I can believe that. It was crazy there this morning. Yeah. So I guess in, in terms of that planning, how much time are you spending in thinking about what it is and conceptualising the shot before you actually go out and take it? Um, I don't know, sort of not a lot. Okay. <laughs> a lot of it is just sort of gut instinct and going with the flow and 
um, you know, I've got a trip coming up to New Zealand and I've been doing, I have been doing a lot of research as to where I'm going right. to go. And, but when I get there, it's going to be whatever happens on the day, that's what yep. I get because, you know, travel photography, that's what it is. Yeah. But in you, saying you that, get to sit there and pick and choose your weather. Yeah. And only but in, in saying that, you know, I sort of know. I want to do this sort of thing with the location, you know, if I want to do multiple exposures. I look for where I can do that. And yeah, so right. there is a little bit of planning. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel when you're out shooting? What, what's, what's the feeling you get out of it? I'm like, I'm like all over the place because I just want to take everything in. I'm, I sort of think, yeah, the, like I just want to get everything. And sometimes I miss everything because I'm too focused on getting everything. <laughs> um that's why I like going back to locations. Yeah. Because right. I'll see, okay, next time I go, I'll do this, or next time I go, I'll do that. So I do like going back to locations. Yeah, yeah. In terms of mastering your your craft, I mean that's a key element of success in uh landscape photography, I think. Um what time do you put into that education process for yourself to understand how your field work and then your processing uh, sort of develops beyond just where you, I mean, everybody starts off at the basics because mm. that, that's what you have to do. It's pretty rare that you see somebody pick up a camera and take a masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I guess in terms of that that process of learning, what, what effort are you putting into that yourself? Oh, well, I have put in the last sort of, four or five years, a lot of effort in learning um, how to process images. Um, I sort of always had a bit of an eye, like compositionally, of how to take a photo. Yep. Um, and it has been a, a steady incline of learning. And, uh, well, during COVID, mm. I spent a lot of time learning stuff, learning new things, looking at other people's work and, you know, practising. Practicing, I suppose, yes. Yeah, yeah, cool. In terms of uh, that lifestyle choice, sounds like it was fairly easy for you to make that transition. You, uh, you know, sold a business and and therefore had the the, the time and uh, spare spare money, I guess, to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, how do you balance working on your photography with everything else in life, though? Um. I'm lucky I've got a fairly understanding husband um, yep. because I do spend a lot of time on photography and I, honestly I could spend more. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it is easy to do because I am sort of retired and yeah. I don't have any major commitments and um, I, I feel like I've, like, earned earned it. Yeah. yeah. Are you trying to turn it into a business or is it just something to, you know, fill fill the, the retirement hours? <laughs> well, um, my husband would like me to have a business, um, but I I don't really want the pressure. I just want to go out and enjoy it. And, um, you know, we, we because of COVID, we sort of couldn't travel, um, but we're travelling. Our plan is to travel a lot. And, um so I don't know that I'd be able to make a business out of it really by yeah, right. travelling. Okay. In terms of uh, where, uh, do you find where you live influences what you shoot and how you shoot? Oh, definitely. Um, I live near Manly, so yep. i am got access access to the beach Um really easy it's really easy to get there it's really easy to get into town if I want to go into town and just catch the yeah. ferry um so you know I do shoot a lot around the city and around the beaches um but uh I'm really looking forward to um going overseas and you know getting some different perspectives sure sure have you done much overseas travel in, in the past? Obviously, the past couple of years is uh, yeah. a bit moot, but the, the past few years? Yeah, we've done, it. we've done a lot. Our business was overseas. We went to China a lot um, mm -hmm. and uh, that we have travelled a lot 
as a family as well. Um, mm -hmm. But now that I can photograph, I have done a few photo tours. I've okay. been to um, India. I've been to China on a photography tour, been to Kashmir and Ladakh, New Zealand. Um, I just went to Turkey for three weeks. Uh, and, yeah, so every opportunity that I can, I'd like to do a photo tour. Yeah, great. Do you uh, have a favourite spot overseas and a favourite spot locally without giving any secrets away? <laughs> um, I really love uh, North Korkor Pool. Yeah, yeah. I go there quite a lot. Um, any of the northern beaches I love, you know, they're great. Yeah, overseas. Choice. Yeah. Overseas, I don't know, put me anywhere, I don't care, I'd, I'd be happy. <laughs> I think... I like remote places. I like um, undiscovered places. Um, I like a lot of minimalist stuff. Um, so, yeah, take me anywhere. I don't care. Sounds great. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your most memorable photography experience? Um, I think when I went to Kashmir and Ladakh, it was mm. an incredible place to go. Um, we went up the highest navigable road in the world uh, yeah. We went, you know, to the lake at Srinagar and, and stayed on houseboats and went out on the um, uh, little, I forget what they called, those little boats out into the marshes and things. Oh, it was just brilliant. Mm. Sound, sounds like Billy. <laughs> I've been to Antarctica too. That was a oh, wow. phenomenal yeah. experience. Yeah. Yeah, I'd I go do. back. They're both Antarctica. places that uh, I've, I've not managed to, to get to yet. And, yeah. Uh, Antarctic is definitely high on the uh, on the bucket list. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd love to go back there again, but I don't think I ever will. Of course, it's so expensive. Yeah, I know that's that's the one thing that's sort of making me bore because uh, mm. there are other places I'd, I'd go to first that don't mm. cost quite as much. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of horror stories, have you got any, you know, really challenging shoots that you've had? Um, I've had a few broken things, including yeah. my head. Oh. So I was in Italy in 2020, no, 19, anyway, uh, and I was um, out on a balcony shooting the moon and I took a step forward and I fell off the balcony. It was about a oh, one no. and a half metre fall and I had my 100 to 400 on my camera and I held it up so it didn't get damaged. And I landed on my head. Oh, no. So I got taken in an ambulance to a helicopter, taken in a helicopter to the hospital. And I was in the hospital for a bit. I had the neck brace on and bandaged head and everything. But, uh, yeah, I won't do that again. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from not falling off balconies, what have you learned about the world through photography? I've learned it's just spectacular. There is so much beauty out there. And if everybody just got up for sunrise and just soaked it all in, we'd all be a happier place. Oh, I you know, don't disagree with you there. It's it's just phenomenal. In terms of your, your, your process, you talked a little bit about how you sort of get a, a little bit all over the place. Are you like that with your editing as well or is that a completely different sort of side um, to your process? Yeah, no, editing I have a pretty good workflow. Um, I did the Adam Williams Easy Way Photography okay. courses that well, probably everybody's done or everybody should do. Yeah. Um, that changed my life. He's a master. Um, yeah. It was just eye-opening what what his processes have done. And yeah. from his processes I've been able to learn more and more things um, I've got a few people on um, YouTube that I follow yep. that I learn stuff from. Um, so, yeah, it's it's just I do have a fairly standard process that I follow, yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. How long would you spend on a shot? Oh, it can be a few seconds to, you know, an hour maybe. Just okay. depends on, um, yeah. Some you, of the sizes get to be, you know, up in the gigabytes and I've got to go, oh, my God, and I've got to, you know, <laughs> decrease the size and everything because yeah. my computer's so old. 
Too many um, layers. Yeah, too many layers, especially in the composing sort yeah. of work. You know, it just gets up there really quickly. Yeah, composite editing does uh, does suck suck the uh, resources out of you. Yeah, yeah. Do you find uh, that's something that relaxes you, or is it something that stresses you out? Into- oh no, I, I yeah, I love it. It's um, you know, creating some new image is just oh, what'll I do here and what'll I do there, and yeah, you know, yeah. it just takes you off into another land of imagination. So yeah, I really, I really enjoy that. Fantastic. Do you prefer? Taking photos with other people or alone? Um, that's a pretty hard one because I do like doing stuff alone, but I really enjoy it when I'm with a group. Yeah. And um, I've got a, a, a really fun group of friends that I've met through um, the Canon Collective. Yep. You know, the Canon Collective used to be run. I met this group of people and... Uh, before COVID, we used to go out every Wednesday morning and shoot sunrise somewhere. Nice. Um, but since COVID, things have sort of, you know, changed a little bit and we don't do it as often. But uh, we do, you know, road trips or go away for weekends. Um, so it is it is nice to, to do things with other people, especially in the dark, you know, because you're getting up at, in the crack of darkness and um you know it can be scary as a woman on her own sometimes yeah no i i I don't i I don't disagree there i've spoken to quite a few female photographers that have uh, said exactly the same thing and i've got to admit as a male photographer it can be a bit sketchy when you're heading out with nothing but a headlamp your tripod and a bag well i always have my tripod at the ready just in case yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not so worried about getting attacked. I'm more worried about getting washed off a of rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I've been in hairy places. My husband would kill me. Um. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife always says to me, ring me when you get there and we <laughs> when you're leaving. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you do Tell sort me of where put you're going so she that. knows where to send the, uh, the coroner. <laughs> oh, dear. I know, it's scary sometimes. Yeah. In terms of your... Uh, social media presence. You know, I've been following you for some time. <laughs> I know you had a bit of an incident a little while ago. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, so just before maybe October, I think, last year, um, I was hacked for my mm. main photography account. I've got a few different ones for the different cool. styles of photography I do, but my main uh, Rosie Photo account was hacked. And um, it was quite devastating, really. Uh, You just feel very out of control. Um, I couldn't let any of my friends, followers know what was going on. And this person was posting photos saying, I've bought a new house and um, go and uh, get onto Bitcoin and all these silly things. Yeah, things, things you wouldn't do. That I wouldn't do. So, you know, I had all these people contacting me saying, oh, Rosie, you've been hacked and everything. And so um, it's just, yeah, it was just awful. And um, I sent messages to Instagram and I went on the Instagram and tried to do all the things that they said when your account was hacked and yep. nothing really worked. Yep. Uh, but luckily I had a friend that worked for Meta Oh, nice. That and, um, yes, I'm 100% sure that he helped me get my account back, which I did probably two months later, but they deleted two years of my posts. Oh, no. So all the last two years, which was probably the best work I've done, just gone. Yeah. So that was a bit devastating, but at least I've got my account back and um, mm. I'm back in control, so... Do you have any idea how it was done? I'm not sure, but the only thing I can think of was I got a message from Instagram, inverted commas, saying, you know, if you want to be a verified account, Ah, click on this link. And I went, oh, that's nice. (laughs) And I I, honestly, that's the only thing I can think of that I've clicked on that link and it's just taken me over by some stupid Nigerian person. Well, could be anywhere. Could be well, Russia. Well, it, it had. You could see where it said oh, yeah. that they okay. were in Nigeria. 
Wow. So, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, so I'm one of the lucky ones, I think, because a lot of people that I spoke to um, never got their accounts back. Yeah, I've I've heard uh, from from several people that, uh, you know, hacked in the last couple of years and they've just had either no response at all from Meta or Instagram, mm. you know, a, at all, or uh, the, the response has been, oh, well, so sad, too yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. Make another account. I know, and that, and that's basically what you have to do, I suppose, and you lose all that effort that you've made for the last however many years, and it's yeah. such a shame. Well, it's the uh, for me. I think it, I'm I'm less worried about personally about my follow account. I'm more worried about the personal contacts that I've made because. Oh. I mean, one of the things I do is actually use social media channels to contact people to yeah. ask them to be on this show for yeah. one. So I've got a whole raft of info there that I'd be devastated if I... Yeah, well, that. absolutely. I mean, I've sort of made a lot of friends, Insta friends, I suppose you'd call them, yeah. and, um, you know, it, it, it's a nice community that I'd built up and, and a lot of people, if they followed, if they unfollowed me, I could follow, like I could get them back. But if yeah. they blocked me, then I couldn't see them. So a lot of my closer friends blocked me, and so I've been struggling to try and get try and contact get them, them to con, you know, back into contact. But uh, yeah, it's it's a tricky situation once that happens to you. Definitely, definitely. Mm. Yeah, I, I I think you know it's a. De- definitely something that everyone should be aware of that yeah. you know, I- Instagram, I don't think, will ever contact you and say, hey, I want to make you a, uh, um, a, mm-hmm. a, a verified person. Certainly I've not, learned that now. <laughs> not, not by clicking on a link anyway. <laughs> no. they, they just give you a blue tick and happy days. Well, actually, yeah. no, now they want you to pay for it. Pay for it, yes, yes. <laughs> uh. Yeah, which I, I personally won't be doing. No, me neither. I won't be either. Like. Yeah. And, you know, if that drives down my engagement, I'm not really going to be overly upset because there are other social media channels out there that yeah. uh, I'm, I'm still, yeah. you know, getting fairly strong engagement from. And I know. And, I mean, I, I, don't really, I don't really care how many followers I've got. I just like to engage with people. I mean, that's the main part is, you know. That's just, exactly it. Yeah. 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 I guess when when did you start your uh, your, your Instagram or your your social media journey? Um, I think probably around two thousand seventeen. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah, and then we sold the business just after that, and so and that's when I sort of got into photography. So that allowed me to have a creative outlet for what I was doing. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a fair fair old time to uh, have, have lost work and everything. Yeah, well, it's and it was more a record of what I've done, yeah. Um, too, because you know it was the journey that I'd been on, and it was all, all recorded there, so I could at any time go back and have a look at it, and you know it was just an, a nice way to store memories almost as well. So yeah. yeah well, I mean that's one one of the reasons that they purported to start it wasn't it <laughs> yeah yeah well imagine how many millions and millions of photographs there are out there yeah i can imagine yeah. what do you do in terms of your work in other than posting it on instagram do you print it do you do anything else with it i sometimes print rarely i'm in a, a photography club i'm in the mossman photography club okay. so okay. um there's competitions to enter and i do enter a few competitions um but mainly just i like to go out and shoot and edit and share you know i don't have any real um goals other than that you know yeah, yeah. no that's that's i think that's great because i mean not every everyone does it for their own reasons and whether it's sharing it with some other person or whether it's uh, you know trying to make money out of it, I think mm. you know, they're all they're all valid reasons. And yeah. you know, from my perspective, if if sharing is uh, what you want to do, then then it's great. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to print some work and you know do some big prints, but, but uh, you know I've got nowhere to put it. 
we've downsized our house so we yeah. haven't got so many walls anymore and yeah. you know <laughs> it's expensive yeah um, it's not, I, not not cheap to get a good size print yeah now. yeah so you know have you ever hit a creative wall and if so how did you handle it actually i i find it difficult if i've been traveling um and you know i've gone through all my photos like i've just done the turkey tour and i've come back and i've gone through all my photos and um edited them all and and sort of getting them ready for a book maybe um because i like to do a travel book when i come back from a trip um and then i sort of go oh now what um you know i've been in sydney for the last three years just shooting the same thing and it's like oh i've done all that what am i going to do <laughs> and it, it does take a little while to get the mojo back and definitely get back into it definitely yeah yeah what, about, what techniques have you used to to try and do that um well probably mainly just look at instagram and see what other people are doing and think okay. oh i should be out there doing that <laughs> and so yeah that sort of inspires you to get back out and going out and shooting with my friends um you know that's inspiring too so yeah eventually you do get your mojo back and you do go wow sydney's a fantastic place and there's so much to shoot here yeah but, um i've yeah. definitely never well i don't think i'll ever get tired of it i mean I would, no, there's I, a lot, lot of places that i want to shoot as well but uh i, I still haven't uh you know plumb the depths to yeah i think we're uh, very lucky to live here and have so oh, much totally to, totally yeah to shoot but so one of the most photogenic cities and you know the number of beaches that are around yeah. the mountains not far away where do you like to shoot best me uh i'm probably happiest uh knee deep on a rock shelf somewhere <laughs> yeah Parameta is definitely a favorite i mm. go quite a bit um the reason being is that every time you go there it looks a bit different yes true the the amount of sand that shifts around and the rocks and you have the the, the green on the on on the rocks that the algae that some some years disappears for six months and then comes back and yeah so every time i've been there it's looked a bit different and it's conditions. a scary place to go to you know in the dark in the dark before yeah. the sun rises because yeah. it's you've got to walk down all those steps and then walk along and then that, there's that big cliff and it's yeah. can be a bit scary yeah it can be it can be a bit intimidating particularly in uh you know high tide with uh with a big swell running it, it can be a bit intimidating if you you know not sure about getting out on a on a rock shelf i i use a pair of neoprene rock mm. boots i've actually got cleats on the bottom of it which yeah. sort of gives you a bit of extra grip but uh you know I, the, it's funny there's some people that swear by bare feet um yeah so i'm a bit iffy about walking around on rocks in bare feet. no no i don't like i don't like bare feet i wear an old pair of sand shoes which probably is hopeless um, <laughs> but <laughs> I know. I mean, no. those sort of shoes have been on my list for a very long time. I just haven't bothered to buy any yet. So yeah, no. For me, it's uh, it, it's kind of a must have, and they're they're not that expensive. I think the no. pair I've got cost me like you know fifteen twenty bucks in yeah. BCF or somewhere like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to do it. Yeah, just just find a just find a fishing shop, and you you should be able to pick up a mm, pair. Mm, true, yeah. true. <laughs> I will. But there's always another lens to buy and another filter to yeah, buy. Yeah, well, I, I was I was going to come to that. What piece of kit can't you live without? Oh, I think I've I've just recently because I've just recently upgraded to the R5, mm. um, and I was still using all my old lenses, and so I've just recently bought the twenty four to one hundred five. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yep. I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty yeah, good. It yeah, does the job. I don't I've think the weight weight is any less than my old gear. Um, it's still as heavy as ever. I, I'm getting weaker. I don't know, but <laughs> oh, I think Canon's renowned for putting pretty pretty thick glass in there. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it, I love it, but it it does my back in. Yeah. yeah. What do you see as being the biggest challenge facing photography right now? Oh, obviously this AI thing. Yeah. Um, you're, a, you're a proponent or a you're against. I think it's incredible, but I 
you know, it's got it's got to have its place, and photography's got to have its place. Yeah. I don't think you know. I don't think people should be putting AI generated images on photography platforms. Um, uh, in terms of social media, and yeah, I, unless they say this is AI generated, which most yeah. people tend to do, thank goodness. But um, yeah, I think it's it's an incredible thing that's happened. I mean, wow. Uh, yeah, but... in terms of generating the images, I think that that's amazing. My my personal feeling is a lot of the, I mean, yes, you have to come up with the concept of what it is that you're trying to create an image from, and yes, you can feed it your own. Or depending on the platform you use, you can feed it your own images and have it generate from images that you've trained it on, but. If you haven't done that and all you're doing is typing in a few words, you're kind of leaning very heavily on the people that program the AI in the first place. Yeah, from yeah. From my perspective. And I don't know how how much credit I'd be willing to take to say, hey, look at this amazing image that somebody else made. Because Yes, that's right. I, I, I mean, type some words. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, the concept may be yours, but nothing else is. Exactly. Yeah, everything. As in, it's kind of like saying, well, um, Rosie, go and take me a photo of the Matterhorn, please. Here's some money, off you go, you know. And the concept I've got in my head, yes, I can see the Matterhorn and that's what I want. What you come back with is not going to be mine. It's going to be yeah. your interpretation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You've shot. Absolutely. And it's kind, it, to me it's kind of like that. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's fun to do. I haven't actually um, ever used it. Yet, I've, so. I've had a dabble and it, it, it creates some interesting images. I I had a play around with it. Uh, the first, I think one of the first ones that I did was actually show me something in the, in, in, you know, do a do a scene in the style of um, J.M. Turner, the, oh, um, yes. the, you know, the uh, fantastic uh, impressionist painter. Mm, mm. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it came back with some... Turnerish looking images, yeah. You know, whether Turner would have been happy. But how did you feel? Did you feel like you created that? Or no, I don't think... feel. I, I didn't feel yeah. any sense of achievement in yeah. it at all, other no. than oh yeah, well it kind of did what I asked it to do. Mm. I wasn't, I, to be honest, I wasn't overly happy with any of the images. Mm. In, in, and I think also, yeah. you know, if you're out there taking your landscape photography. You're not just taking a photo. You're experiencing oh. the whole 360 degree. Uh, you know the weather and the light and the exactly. grass under your feet. You know yeah, water rushing around your around, around your ankles. You know if you yeah yeah. On, on so a, it's more than side. just an image. It's just the whole thing. So yeah. you know getting out there and shooting is a, a a beautiful experience. Yeah, in terms of landscape, I don't think it'll ever replace that. Um, and you know people and and their desire to be creative will always be there. In terms of commercial advertising art, I can yeah. see I can definitely see, you know, photographers losing a bit of ground yeah. there because yeah. you know, a, a corporate art director instead, you know, or a advertising executive can type in a few words and say this is exactly what I want. And if it's not exactly what he wants, he'll have another go and yeah. own until he gets what he wants. Which, yeah. Yeah, you know, would cost him a lot more if he was charging, uh, getting a photographer to do the mm, work. Mm. Yeah, so I, I, can, I can see that maybe. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. that'll be a whole new ball game for the advertisers, I'm sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Mm. And then there's, I guess, the the. The, the the word and verbiage bit around it, you know. I've, I I haven't really played around with that a lot, um, but I've heard that some photographers are now doing that to sort of come up with captions for their photos. So they're sort of feeding a photo in and getting uh, AI to actually generate a caption. Oh, really? Which is oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one thing that I'm playing around with is uh, speech to text because I end up with uh, the audio out of these podcasts. 
Right. One of the one of the ideas that I've got to sort of extend things. I haven't really talked about this to, to anybody, but I've, I've been, mainly because I've only just sort of started looking at it in the last week. But um, uh, you know, turning some of these discussions into articles that I could potentially then sell on to uh, magazines and so forth yeah. using the AI. So I feed it the audio file and it spits out the, right. the transcription. Um, i got to say, the attempts that it's made so far, uh, maybe it's my Australian accent and some of my guests <laughs> attempts that it struggles with, but, uh, yeah, some some of the some of the words that come out and not the words that were said. <laughs> well, yes, you'd have to absolutely check everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not just leaving it to that. But at least I guess if nothing else, it gives you a starting point and a, mm. a body mm -hmm. that you can then trim down and and turn into something. Yes, I mean it does make some tasks a lot quicker. I mean, yeah. safety I mean, having to type it. Uh, yeah. Every everybody said absolutely that'd drive you up the wall <laughs> yeah particularly with uh i mean your episode 86 so you know with 86 episodes <laughs> yay 86 yeah anyway <laughs> where do you see the future going is it is it more ai is it less ai is it people doing their own thing oh i think i think there's a place for everything i mean you know the world continues to change and develop and hopefully ai will fit in and not take over as it does in some of those movies that you see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I, I think people will always be more creative than a machine. And yeah. uh, you know, there's so much more emotion in an image that a person can create than a machine can create, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah. And so much more individuality, I think, by getting photographers to take photos than. A machine to create things so yeah, yeah. hopefully it'll will continue to take photos forever yeah I'll, i for one uh welcome our robot overlords <laughs> 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 but uh no i i certainly hope that's the the case i don't see uh as i say i don't see people giving up on it and mm. deciding oh well you know the images from ai are just so good I want to go to Japan or I want to go yeah. to Iceland and I want yeah. to experience that place. Yeah. I don't just want to type in some words, show me a picture of festival. Yeah. I know. I mean, you don't want to sit at your computer. <laughs> yeah. Sit at your computer and not go out and experience the no, world. The, and, that's, yeah. that's not what I like doing. I like mm. editing, but mm. I like editing because I've been there because it helps yes. me relive the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so do you make books or what do you do with your Photos. Well, yeah, I do. I, I normally make books. Usually, if I go overseas, that that trip turns into you know. Well, the the higher quality photography that I try to <laughs> aspire to, I won't say I always succeed, but the the better quality stuff, as well as um, as as my wife says, it doesn't matter. It's just a snapshot. Put it in the book. So yeah. we we make those sorts of books, which is a bit of a hybrid. I've got a couple of other uh books that i um i do have uh that are specifically sort of you know nicer photography but um i've also got a couple of prints floating around and you know i i am trying to sell prints i've got them on the website so grantswinder.com yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go yeah. there if you want to buy a print <laughs> absolutely what's your favorite thing about being a photographer I think it's uh, getting out there and being in the moment. You know, no matter what moment it is, there's something really incredible about it. Yeah. And, I, I, yeah, I, because I, when I travel, you know, I do a lot of research about where we're going to go and, um, yeah. you know, I'm dragging my husband here, there and everywhere. He's not so keen about getting up at the crack of dawn, but... Um, you know, even he's impressed with what we've seen since I've been doing photography because we have explored places that not other other people wouldn't go to. Yeah. At at times that uh, you know, it's perfect for the scene. So I think I think that's the thing that I really enjoy the most is actually 
getting out there and experiencing amazing places. Yeah, no, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're not out shooting? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, be with my family, I suppose. Um, I like watching movies. I like reading books. Um, I don't like cooking much. No? Okay. No, I'm not a big cook. Um, yeah. So is that uh, your husband's purview or do you No, just... <laughs> neither of Roberts too. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a bad cook, but I'm, I would rather be out photographing than cooking. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I've got a lot of friends who are very good cooks and I always feel quite inadequate in that department, but, uh, hey, they can't take a photo like I can. No, well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. it's um, there, uh, Yeah, there's lots to do. There's, you know, it just depends on what time it is and, yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, who are the photographers that I should be talking to on the podcast? Uh, well, I would definitely recommend Mike Langford and Jackie Rankin. Yep. They they are great friends of mine and I, I think they're fantastic photographers. Um, Ricardo de Cuna, he's a yeah. brilliant guy. Yep. Um, uh, I think you've spoken to Wanda Craswell, Wanda. Yeah, I've spoken to Wanda, yeah. Um, Sandra Dan. Um, I haven't, haven't had her on, yeah. She's, I've done a lot of composite work with her over COVID and um, right. she's she's an amazing artist. And um, Sue Ellen Sadie Cook, she's another incredible um, composite artist as well that I've become friends with. Mm. And um, I don't know, who else? I think you spoke to Stefan. A little while yeah, ago, he's great. Yeah. Um, Timothy and Robin Moon. No, I haven't got them on the yeah. list. Yeah, so they're uh, um, members of the um, Mossman Camera Club and um, oh. they're very inspirational. They've, they've had an incredible journey in photography, especially Robin. She's just been down to Antarctica for two trips and she's been over to um, uh, Canada and Pennsylvania photographing snowy owls and things like that yeah. she's yeah. yeah she's doing amazing stuff and timothy's a great great photographer as well so yeah there's a few people yeah, fantastic thank you very much for that oh i've got one question that uh everyone needs to know the answer to do you like pineapple on pizza well i don't actually choose to have pineapple on pizza but if it's there i'm pleasantly surprised you're not picking it off no, I'm not picking it off. It's a little sweet treat that you get. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mind it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to tell me a little bit more about yourself, Rosie. It's been thanks so much, Grant. Getting to know you. Where can people find what you do? Oh, mainly um, Instagram. I've got uh, my Rosie photo with an F R O S I E F O T O. And then I've got Rosie Photo Art, where I do my creative sort of work. Uh, Rosie Photo Aqua is where I do a lot of uh, seascapes and water photography. So that's my three little accounts. Brilliant. Thanks very yeah. much, Rosie. Okay. Thanks so much, Grant. Pleasure. Thanks again for listening to Landscape Photography World. I hope you enjoyed the show and keep listening because I'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes. You can find my work in this podcast at grantswinburnphotography.com. I'm also on Vero, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. I'm Grant Swinburne. Hope to see you out shooting soon. Mm -hmm.